Right, okay, so in this video we're going to have a look at fraction calculations with mixed numbers. Okay, so we're going to look at adding, subtracting, dividing and multiplying. We're going to start with adding and subtracting with mixed numbers and just have a look at all the little bits that we need to look out for in different questions. But grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, uh, make some notes and we've got a few to have a little practice on here. So for the first one we've got work out 3 and 4 fifths, add 3 sevenths and give your answer as a mixed number in its simplest form. Now when we're looking at this sort of question here, uh, one thing that we need to remember, no matter which type of calculation we're doing, adding, subtracting, dividing or multiplying, if we have mixed numbers involved we need to make them top heavy first. Now when it comes to adding and subtracting there is a little bit of a different approach that you can take that some of you may use, but I'm going to use the same method for all of these types of questions and that is making any mixed numbers top heavy fractions first or, okay, or improper fractions first. So the process for doing that is obviously taking our fraction here, 3 and 4 fifths, we want to turn that into an amount of fifths. So to do that, we want to figure out how many fifths are in 3. So we can do 3 times 5, which is 15. Add the extra 4 fifths there, and that makes 19 fifths. So 3 and 4 fifths, 3 times 5 is 15. Add the 4 that we've got there as well is 19 fifths. Okay, so it's the big number times the bottom to make 15, add the top number on the fraction there, 19, so we've got 19 fifths. And we're going to add that to the 3 sevenths. Now when it comes to adding and subtracting, we need to have a common denominator. So we need that number on the bottom to be exactly the same. Now that means that we can multiply both fractions here, as long as we should do whatever we do to the bottom, we also do to the top. We can make equivalent fractions with a common denominator. So thinking about 5 and 7, the lowest common multiple of those is 35. So in order to get them to be 35, the left fraction there I can times the top and bottom by 7 and the right fraction we can times the top and bottom by 5 and that would give us 35 on the bottom of both. So we've still got to work out 19 times 7 there and obviously take your time doing so but 19 times 7 is 133 and at the moment that is going to be over now 35. Okay, so you get some quite big numbers here, but obviously don't be afraid just to the side to do some multiplication there. I did this 7 times 10 and, the, and 7 times 9 and added them both together, okay, but you can show you working out to the side. On the right fraction there, we're going to times them both by 5, so 3 becomes 15 and 7 becomes 35. And now we're in a position where we can add these both together. So we can just add together the numerators, 133 plus 15, which gives us 148. And that is over 35, remembering that you don't add together the denominators. There we go, we've got 148 30 fifths. Now obviously it says here to give your answer as a mixed number in its simplest form. So it's up to you whether you try and simplify this or whether you uh, so obviously turn it into a mixed number first. But we need to turn it back into a mixed number. So to do that I need to know how many times does 35 go into 148. That's not the nicest, so I'm just going to write down a few of the 35 times table. So 35, add another 35 is 70. Add another 35 is 105, add another 35 is 140, and then it's not going to go beyond 140 there, because that gets, obviously we, our number there is only 148. So uh, to go from here, um, we know that that 35 goes in four times, so that's going to be a big four. And what's left over from 140 to 148 is an additional 8 35ths, there we go, so 4 and 8 35ths left over. Okay, so looking at that number there, you've just got to decide as well, does that little fraction at the end there simplify? Does 8 over 35 simplify? Now in the case of this fraction here, it actually doesn't. There's nothing that goes into both 8 and 35 other than 1, and obviously that's not going to simplify it for us. So that actually is fully simplified there. So even though it says give it in its simplest form, in this circumstance here, that little fraction on the end there doesn't simplify. Okay, but it's going to say that anyway, because we didn't have to use 35 as our denominator. We could have potentially used a bigger number like 70 or even larger if we wanted but because we use the lowest common multiple it's just ended up that that did, doesn't actually simplify at the end there but do look out for that because that fraction quite often does need simplifying okay but there's our final answer 4 and 8 over 35. Let's have a look at some subtracting. Right okay so this question says 2 and 1 seventh take away 1 and a quarter okay work that out and give your answer in its simplest form. Now it doesn't mention anything about it being a mixed number so that obviously gives us a bit of a hint that we're not going to have a mixed number here but we're just going to go about this process in exactly the same way as when we were adding okay adding and subtracting the process is the same except obviously we're not going to add our fractions together at the end we're going to take them away from each other. So we're going to make them top heavy to start with turn them into improper fractions so 2 and 1 seventh 2 times 7 is 14 add the 1 is 15 over 7 
and the one on the right, and we're obviously taking these away. One times the four is four, add the extra one on top there is five quarters. And there we go. And we just need to make these have a common denominator. And again, we'll look for the lowest common multiple here. So seven times four uh, is 28. That does actually give us the lowest common multiple there. So we're gonna make the denominators out of 28. So we're gonna times the right fraction by seven. Okay, that's top and bottom. And we're gonna times the left fraction by four. And again, that's gonna to be top and bottom. So our two fractions are gonna be out of 28. So I'm just gonna write two blank, blank fractions here. I know what the denominators are gonna be. I just need to figure out those numerators. So four times 15 on the top of the left one gives us 60. And five times seven on the top of the right one gives us 35. There we go, so we've got 60 over 28, take away 35 over 28. So again, the denominator isn't gonna change. We're just gonna write how many 28s we have left. And put 60, take away 35 there, leaves us with 25. There we go, so that is our final answer there. We get 25 over 30, uh, over 28, sorry. Okay, so again, just have a quick look. Does that simplify? Are there any numbers that go into 25 and 28? Um, no, okay, 25 divided and divides by five, one and 25, and, and none of those apart from one obviously go into 28, so it doesn't simplify. So again, it says give your answer in its simplest form, but again, we've, we got the lowest common multiple there for the denominator and made sure that they're the ones we use. So a little hint for you there is always look for that lowest common multiple, okay? In the case of these two, they were quite nice because it was just the uh, two denominators times together, but you always wanna have a look for that lowest common multiple just to avoid having to do that simplifying at the end there. But there we go, that is fully simplified, and here's a couple of questions for them for you to have a go at. Right, okay, so there's quite a few questions here. Uh, so pause the video there, have a go, and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Right, okay, so I'll go over the answers for these. You might just want to skip forward a couple of minutes just to sort of see the answers, because obviously you don't want to go over them all if you're quite confident with these. It is one of those sort of topics that once you've got it, you're probably just able to just fly through some of these questions. But let's have a look at this first one here. Making that top heavy, we have seven fifths, and we're going to add it to three quarters. I'm gonna make them have a common denominator. I'm not gonna write all the working out down here. We're gonna make it out of 20. So on the left fraction there, seven times four is 28 over 20. And the right one there, times that by five, we have 15 over 20. And we add those two together. Let's see what we get. We get 33, 43 over 20. And then writing that as a mixed number in its simplest form, 20 goes into 43 twice with a remainder of three. So two and three twentieths. There we go, and there's our final answer. On to the next one, on the right there, uh, with the adding again. We get two times three is six, add the two is eight, so we have eight thirds. And we're gonna add to that five, six, seven, eight fifths. And again, our common denominator there will be 15. So times in the left one by five, we get 40 over 15. And we're gonna add to that, times in the right one by three, 24 over 15. And we add those together, we get 64 over 15. And writing that as a mixed number, let's see what we get. 15 goes into 64 times, so it's going to be 4. For the remainder of 4, so 4 over 15 left over. There we go, 15, 30, 45, 60. It goes in 4 times, and then the remainder from 60 to 64 is 4. And again, that is fully simplified. So there we go, that's our final answer for that one. On to our next one, we're doing a takeaway now. So two times 15 is 30, plus the seven is 37 over 15. And we're gonna take away one times the three, which is three, plus the two is five thirds. Now that's quite a good one there because actually our lowest common multiple is 15. So we don't even need to change the left one. So we've got 37 over 15. And we're gonna take away, times in that one by five, gives us 25 over 15. There we go, and we can take those away on the numerator there. 37, uh, take away 25, leaves us with 5, 6, 7, 12. Let's have a look, I'm gonna write this down actually. There we go, 37, take away 25, leaves us with 12 over 15. I've just spotted that it simplifies, I was gonna swap colors there. But we've got 12 over 15, and actually that does simplify there. You can divide the top and bottom by three. So dividing the top by three gives us four, and dividing the bottom by three gives us five. There we go, so our final answer there is four fifths. Right, okay, and on to our last question. Uh, we've got two and three fifths, which is 10, 11, 12, 13 fifths. And we're gonna take away six plus five is 11 sixths. There we go. Our lowest common multiple here is 30. So times in the right one by six, 13 times six is 78. There we go, over 30. 
And we're going to take away times in the right one by 5, 55 over 30. There we go. And 78, take away 55. I'll spot in my head whether it simplifies first is 23. 23 over 30. No, that's not going to simplify. So that gives us straight away in our final answer here. We get 23 over 30. There we go. And that doesn't simplify there, so that's our final answer. All right, there we go. That is adding and subtracting with mixed numbers. Now let's have a look at some multiplying and dividing. Right, okay, so dividing with mixed numbers to start with. It says, so work this out, one and one fifth divided by three quarters. Give your answer as a mixed number in its simplest form. So again, let's make these top heavy. So one and one fifth is six fifths. Big times the bottom is five, but the one is six. So I'm going to divide that by three quarters, okay? Now, normal fraction rules apply here. When we are dividing fractions, we keep the first one as it is. We're gonna flip the second one over, do the reciprocal of that second one, and then we're gonna multiply the fractions instead. And multiplying fractions is probably one of the easiest little bit of math you ever have to do, because we, you know, exactly what we'd like to happen happens. We just multiply the top, multiply the bottom. So in fact, rather than doing six fifths and doing a divide, I'm just gonna times it by the reciprocal, which is four over three, literally just flipping it over. And then from there, we just multiply the top numbers, so 6 times 4 is 24, and 5 times 3 is 15, and there we go, we get our final answer. Now obviously it says to give your answer as a mixed number in its simplest form, so I do want to have a look at creating a mixed number or simplifying it first, okay, it's up to you which one you go. I'm going to uh, turn it into a mixed number first, so we get 15 goes into 24 once, so we have 1, and the remainder there is 9 from 15 to 24, so we have 9 over 15 left over. Now this is the first time this has come up, look, because that mixed number there, okay, this little fraction with it does actually simplify, they both divide by 3, and I would need to simplify this now, okay, so that would end up being 1, and if I divide the top and bottom by 3, 9 divided by 3 is 3, and 15 divided by 3 is 5, so my final answer is 1 and 3 fifths, okay, so you just got to spot and watch out for that, okay, but there is something else you could have done, you could have taken a slightly different approach there, you could have actually simplified at this point, the top and bottom both divide by 3 and you get 8 fifths when you do that, and then you could turn it into a mixed number from there, so 5 goes into 8 once with a remainder of 3, and you get one and three fifths. So it's completely up to you which method that you prefer to use, whether you turn it into a mixed number first and simplify the fraction, or whether you simplify the fraction and then turn it into a mixed number, it's completely up to you. Okay, but just obviously remembering that when you divide, you keep the first one and you multiply by the reciprocal, okay? And a lot of people remember that, like keep, flip, change, okay? You keep the first, flip the second, and change the sign into a times. And obviously when we're multiplying fractions, that's really nice and easy. And that's what we're gonna have a look at next, two mixed numbers being multiplied, and here it is. Right, okay, so multiplying these two mixed numbers then. So we've got three and a half, so big times the bottom is six, add the one is seven, so seven halves. And we're going to multiply that by one times the five is five, add the three is eight, so eight fifths. There we go. And that's really nice and simple again, as we've mentioned. All you do is times the top times the bottom. So we've got seven times eight, which is 56. There we go. And on the bottom there, we've got two times five which is 10. Now again, completely up to you whether you simplify at this point. I'm just gonna turn it into a mixed number and then simplify it. 10 goes into 55 times with a remainder of six. So we get five and six tenths. But again, at this point here, that little fraction there does need simplifying. Okay, so five and six and 10 both divide by two. So we get three over five when we divide them both by two and there's our final answer. Again though, just a little note obviously because we could have simplified it first. These numbers here both divide by 2. 58 divided by 2 is 28. And on the bottom there, that would be 5. And then you could turn it to a mixed number from there. So 5 goes into 25 five times with a remainder of 3. So 5 and 3 fifths. Okay, if you want to take that approach instead, completely up to you. Right, okay, so that is dividing and multiplying with mixed numbers. Uh, and now here's a few questions for you to have a go at. Right, okay, so here's four questions, some multiplying, some dividing. Um, so have a go, pause the video there, and we'll go over the answers in a sec. Right, okay, so these multiplying fractions are probably the easiest to start with. So we've got four, five, six, seven quarters, and we're going to multiply that by one, two, three, four thirds, okay? So seven times four is 28 on the top. Let's have a look, let's just swap colours here. So seven times four is 28, and three times four is 12. There we go, and we just need to turn that into a mixed number, although we could simplify it first. Okay, actually, I'll tell you what, I'll simplify it first this time. So uh, that becomes 14 over 6. In fact, the top and bottom there divide by 4. Um, so we get 7 over 3, and then that can be written as a mixed number there. To finish that off, 3 goes into 7 twice, so the remainder 1 
two and a third. Right, one thing I haven't mentioned here is that there are other methods of multiplying as well. You can actually cross cancel with multiplying. I've decided not to in this particular video just because there's more steps. Obviously, if you have learned to cross cancel and stuff like that, that's absolutely fine. I'll probably do a separate video looking at cross canceling and in terms of multiplying. Uh, but when it just comes to learning all these methods, I'm quite happy just for people to just, you know, just have not have less things to have to remember. Uh, but, in, but you can actually look at cross canceling as well. And uh, I may talk about that another time. But on this next one here, we've got working this next one out. So we got six fifths, that's not a six. Let's have a look, six fifths. And we're gonna multiply that by seven thirds. There we go. And when we multiply those together, let's see what we get. Six times seven is 42. And five times three is 15. And then again, we just need to simplify that. So let's have a think, 30, 45, it doesn't go in. Uh, that many times 15 goes into 42 up to 30 it goes in twice and then there is a remainder from 30 to 42 of 12 there we go so actually we could have simplified that first we get 2 and 12 over 15 now that does simplify uh, top and bottom divide by 3 there so that's 2 and 12 divided by 3 is 4 15 divided by 3 is 5 so we get 2 and 4 fifths as our final answer there there we go Right on to our next ones, we've got some dividing, so one extra step, and that's obviously just to keep flip change. So we have 15, 16, 17 fifths there, and we're dividing that by two sevenths, okay? So always just write that out first before you go into the keep flip change, and then let's write this out. So that becomes 17 over five multiplied by seven over two. And now we can actually work this out nice and easy, multiplying the top and the bottom. So on the bottom there, two times five is 10, and the top, you might just want to take a little bit more time working out, but seven times 10 is 70. Seven times seven is 49. Add them together, we get 119, but obviously show you working out for that to the side. Okay, and this is not uh, this time going to simplify at all, but 10 goes into 119. It goes in 11 times up to 110, and then there's going to be nine left over up to the 19 there. So it's 11 and nine tenths. And there we go, there's our final answer. And onto our last question here. Three and a third divided by four and three quarters. Give your answer in its simplest form, so no mixed numbers this time. But we have 10 thirds there. And we're gonna divide that by 16, 17, 18, 19 quarters. And again, let's do our keep flip change. So we've got 10 thirds, and we're gonna times that by four over 19. Right, okay, and let's work that out then. So on the top, 10 times four is 40. And on the bottom, 3 times 19, 3 times 10 is 30, times the 9 is 57, so 40 over 57, okay, 40 over 57, let's have a think, Does that, that doesn't simplify, no numbers are going to that, 4 goes into 40, 8 goes into 40, neither of those go into 57, 5 and 10 don't. Uh, and then there we go, 20 and 2 definitely don't. Okay, so there we go, that doesn't actually simplify. So there we go, there's our final answer. Okay, in its simplest form, 40 over 57. And there is our final answer for that last question. Right, there we go. There's a bit of a rundown on all the different kind of fraction calculations and all the different sorts of questions you can get. Uh, but there we go. Hopefully you found that useful and helpful. If you did, please like, please comment, please subscribe, and I'll see you for the next one.